Welcome aboard, fellow enthusiasts, as we embark on another incredible video. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of landscape architecture. We hope you find it enlightening. Landscape architecture is the design of outdoor areas, landmarks, and structures to achieve environmental, social, behavioral, or aesthetic outcomes. It involves the systematic design and general engineering of various structures for construction and human use, investigation of existing social, ecological, and soil conditions and processes in the landscape, and the design of other interventions that will produce desired outcomes. The scope of the profession is broad and can be subdivided into several subcategories including professional or licensed landscape architects who are regulated by governmental agencies and possess the expertise to design a wide range of structures and landforms for human use, landscape design which is not a licensed profession, site planning, stormwater management, erosion control, environmental restoration, public realm, parks, recreation and urban planning, visual resource management, green infrastructure planning and provision, and private estate and residence landscape muster planning and design, all at varying scales of design, planning and management. A practitioner in the profession of landscape architecture may be called a landscape architect. However, in jurisdictions where professional licenses are required, it is often only those who possess a landscape architect's license who can be called a landscape architect. Prepare yourself for an eye-opening discussion on definition of landscape architecture in the upcoming portion of this video. Modern landscape architecture is a multidisciplinary field incorporating aspects of urban design, architecture, geography, ecology, civil engineering, structural engineering, horticulture, environmental psychology, industrial design, soil sciences, botany, and fine arts. The activities of a landscape architect can range from the creation of public parks and parkways to site planning for campuses and corporate office parks, from the design of residential estates to the design of civil infrastructure, and from the management of large wilderness areas to reclamation of degraded landscapes such as mines or landfills. Landscape architects work on structures and external spaces in the landscape aspects of the design, large or small urban, suburban and rural, and with hard-built and soft-planted materials, while integrating ecological sustainability. The most valuable contribution can be made at the first stage of a project to generate ideas with technical understanding and creative flair for the design, organization, and use of spaces. The landscape architect can conceive the overall concept and prepare the master plan from which detailed design drawings and technical specifications are prepared. They can also review proposals to authorize and supervise contracts for the construction work. Other skills include preparing design impact assessments, conducting environmental assessments and audits, and serving as an expert witness at inquiries on land use issues. The majority of their time will most likely be spent inside an office building designing and preparing models for clients. As we progress, let's shine a spotlight on history and examine its intricate interplay within our topic. For the period before 1800, the history of landscape gardening later called landscape architecture is largely that of master planning and garden design for manor houses, palaces and royal properties. An example is the extensive work by Andrew Lenitre for King Louis XIV of France on the gardens of Versailles. The first person to write of making a landscape was Joseph Addison in 1712. The term landscape architecture was invented by Gilbert Loing Meeson in 1828, and John Claudius Lowen was instrumental in the adoption of the term landscape architecture by the modern profession. He took up the term from Meeson and gave it publicity in his encyclopedias and in his 1840 book on the landscape gardening and landscape architecture of the late Humphrey Repton. John Tordius Lowen was an established and influential horticultural journalist and Scottish landscape architect whose writings were instrumental in shaping Victorian taste in gardens, public parks, and architecture. 
in the landscape gardening and landscape architecture of the late Humphrey Repton. Lowen describes two distinct styles of landscape gardening existing at the beginning of the 19th century, geometric and natural. Lowden wrote that each style reflected a different stage of society. The geometric style was most striking and pleasing, displaying wealth and taste in an early state of society and in countries where the general scenery was wild, irregular, and natural, and man, comparatively, uncultivated and unrefined. The natural style was used in modern times and in countries where society is in a higher state of cultivation, displaying wealth and taste through the sacrifice of profitable lands to make room for such designs. The prominent English landscape designer Humphrey Repton 1750-1818 echoed similar ideas in his work and design ideas. In his writings on the use of delineated spaces e.g. courtyards, terrace walls, fences, Repton states that while the motive for defence no longer exists, the features are still useful in separating the gardens, which belong to man, and the forest, or desert, which belongs to the wild denizens. Repton refers to indigenous peoples as uncivilized human beings, against whom some decided line of defence was absolutely necessary. The practice of landscape architecture spread from the old to the new world. The term landscape architect was used as a professional title by Frederick Law Olmsted in the United States in 1863 and Andrew Jackson Damming, another early American landscape designer, was editor of the Horticulturist magazine. In 1841 his first book, A Treatise on the Theory and Practice of Landscape Gardening, adapted to North America was published to a great success. It was the first book of its kind published in the United States. During the latter 19th century, the term landscape architect began to be used by professional landscapes designers and was firmly established after Frederick Law Olmsted Jr. and Beatrix Jones later Ferrand with others founded the American Society of Landscape Architects ASLA in 1899. IFLA was founded at Cambridge. England, in 1948 with Sir Geoffrey Jellicoe as its first president, representing 15 countries from Europe and North America. Later, in 1978, FLA's headquarters were established in Versailles. Our focus now turns to fields of activity an important aspect of our discussion. The variety of the professional tasks that landscape architects collaborate on is very broad, but some examples of project types include parts of general design and public infrastructure sustainable development stormwater management including rain gardens, green roofs, groundwater recharge, green infrastructure, and constructed wetlands. Landscape design for educational function and site design for public institutions and government facilities parks, botanical gardens, arbitums, greenways, and nature preserves recreation facilities such as playgrounds, golf courses, theme parks and sports facilities housing areas, industrial parks and commercial developments estate and residence landscape planning and design landscaping and accents on highways, transportation structures, bridges, and transit corridors contributions to urban design, town and city squares, waterfronts, pedestrian schemes natural park, tourist destination, and recreating historical landscapes, and historic garden appraisal and conservation studies reservoirs, dams, power stations, reclamation of extractive industry applications or major industrial projects and mitigation environmental assessment and landscape assessment, planning advice and land management proposals. Coastal and offshore developments and mitigation ecological design any aspect of design that minimizes environmentally destructive impacts by integrating itself with natural processes and sustainability. Landscape managers use their knowledge of landscape processes to advise on the long-term care and development of the landscape. They often work in forestry, nature conservation and agriculture. Landscape scientists have specialist skills such as soil science, hydrology, geomorphology or botany that they relate to the practical problems of landscape work. Their projects can range from site surveys to the ecological assessment of broad areas for planning or management purposes. 
They may also report on the impact of development or the importance of particular species in a given area. Landscape planners are concerned with landscape planning for the location, scenic, ecological and recreational aspects of urban, rural and coastal land use. Their work is embodied in written statements of policy and strategy, and their remit includes master planning for new developments, landscape evaluations and assessments, and preparing countryside management or policy plans. Some may also apply an additional specialism such as landscape archaeology or law to the process of landscape planning. Green roof or more specifically, vegetative roof designers design extensive and intensive roof gardens for stormwater management, evapotranspirative cooling, sustainable architecture, aesthetics, and habitat creation. Let's now enter the realm of relation to urban planning and discover the fascinating stories it has to tell. Through the 19th century, urban planning became a focal point and central issue in cities. The combination of the tradition of landscape gardening and the emerging field of urban planning offered landscape architecture an opportunity to serve these needs. In the second half of the century, Frederick Law Olmsted completed a series of parks that continued to have a significant influence on the practices of landscape architecture today. Among these were Central Park in New York City, Prospect Park in Brooklyn, New York and Boston's Emerald Necklace Park system. Jens Jensen designed sophisticated and naturalistic urban and regional parks for Chicago, Illinois, and private estates for the Ford family including Fairlane and Gortler Point. One of the original 11 founding members of the American Society of Landscape Architects ASLA, and the only woman, was Beatrix Ferrand. She was design consultant for over a dozen universities including Princeton in Princeton, New Jersey, Yale in New Haven, Connecticut, and the Arnold Arboretum for Harvard in Boston, Massachusetts. Her numerous private estate projects include the landmark Dumbarton Oaks in the Georgetown neighborhood of Washington, District of Columbia since that time. Other architects most notably Ruth Havey and Alden Hopkins changed certain elements of the Ferran design. Since this period urban planning has developed into a separate independent profession that has incorporated important contributions from other fields such as civil engineering, architecture and public administration. Urban planners are qualified to perform tasks independent of landscape architects, and in general, the curriculum of landscape architecture programs do not prepare students to become urban planners. Landscape architecture continues to develop as a design discipline and to respond to the various movements in architecture and design throughout the 20th and 21st centuries. Thomas Church was a mid-century landscape architect significant in the profession. Roberto Burrell Marx in Brazil combined the international style and native Brazilian plants and culture for a new aesthetic. Innovation continues today solving challenging problems with contemporary design solutions for master planning, landscapes, and gardens. Ian McCard was known for introducing environmental concerns in landscape architecture. He popularized a system of analyzing the layers of a site in order to compile a complete understanding of the qualitative attributes of a place. This system became the foundation of today's Geographic Information Systems GIS. A card would give every qualitative aspect of the site a layer, such as the history, hydrology, topography, vegetation, and so on. GIS software is ubiquitously used in the landscape architecture profession today to analyze materials in and on the Earth's surface and is similarly used by urban planners, geographers, forestry and natural resources professionals, etc. European nations enabled the widespread circulation of urban planning strategies by transferring landscaping ideas and practices to overseas colonies. The Green Belt was a popular landscape practice exported by Britain onto colonial territories such as Haifa 1918-1948. Spatial mechanisms like the Green Belt, implemented through the Haifa Bay Plan and the British Grand Model, were used to enforce political control and civic order and extend Western ideas of progress and development. 
the Greater London Regional Planning Committee accepted the Green Belt concept which formed the basis of the 1938 Green Belt Act. The planning prototype demarcated open spaces, distinguished between city and countryside, limited urban growth, and created zoning divisions. It was used extensively in the British colonies to facilitate British rule through the organised division of landscape and populations. Get ready to uncover the mysteries surrounding relation to indigenous practices as we navigate its intriguing terrain. Indigenous land management practices create constantly changing landscapes through the use of vegetation and natural systems, contrasting with Western epistemologies of the discipline that separate ornament from function. The discipline of landscape architecture favours Western designs made from structured materials and geometric forms. Landscape architecture history books tend to include projects that contain constructed architectural elements that persist over time, excluding many indigenous landscape-based designs. Landscape architecture textbooks often place indigenous peoples as a prefix to the official start of the discipline. The widely read landscape history text The Landscape of Man 1964 offers a global history of the designed landscape from past to present, featuring African and other indigenous peoples in its discussions of Paleolithic man between 500,000 and 8,000 BCE in relation to human migration. Indigenous land management practices are described as archaeological rather than a part of contemporary practice. Gardens in Time 1980 also places indigenous practice as prehistory at the beginning of the landscape architecture timeline. Authors John and Ray Oldham describe Aborigines of Australia as survivors of an ancient way of life who provide an opportunity to examine Western Australia as a meeting place of a prehistoric man. In the late 18th century, the landscapes created by Aboriginal land and fire management practices appealed to English settlers in Australia. Journals from the period of early white settlement note the landscape resembling parks and popular designs in English landscape gardens of the same period. In England, these designs were considered sophisticated and celebrated for their intentional sacrifice of usable land. In Australia, the park-like condition was used to justify British control, citing its emptiness and lack of productive use as a basis for the dispossession of Aboriginal people. In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting education and exploring its intricate connections to art topic. Landscape architects are generally required to have university or graduate education from an accredited landscape architecture degree program which can vary in length and degree title. They learn how to create projects from scratch, such as residential or commercial planting and designing outdoor living spaces. They are willing to work with others to get a better outcome for the customers when doing a project. They will have to learn the basics of how to create a project on a manner of time and will require to get your license in a certain state to be allowed to work. Students of landscape architects will learn how to interact with clients and will learn how to explain the design from scratch when giving the final project. Landscape architecture has been taught in the University of Manchester since the ERS. The course in the Manchester School of Architecture enables students to gain various bachelor's and master's degrees, including MOMS which is accredited by the Landscape Institute and by the Royal Town Planning Institute. With that being said, let's now move on to profession. In many countries, a professional institute, comprising members of the professional community, exists in order to protect the standing of the profession and promote its interests, and sometimes also regulate the practice of landscape architecture. The standard and strength of legal regulations governing landscape architecture practice varies from nation to nation, with some requiring licensure in order to practice, and some having little or no regulation. In Europe, North America, parts of South America, Australia, India, and New Zealand, landscape architecture is a regulated profession. As we enter this new phase, let's analyze Argentina from different angles and evaluate its significance. Since 1889, with the arrival of the French architect and urbanist landscaper Carlos Thays, 
recommended to recreate the national capitals, parks, and public gardens. It was consolidated and the apprentice and training program in landscaping that eventually became a regulated profession. Currently, the leading academic institution is the UBA University of Buenos Aires with Faculty de Architecture, de CY Urbanism, Faculty of Architecture, Design and Urbanism, offering a bachelor's degree in urban landscaping design and planning. The profession itself is regulated by the National Ministry of Urban Planning of Argentina and the Institute of the Buenos Aires Botanical Garden. In this segment, we'll be unravelling the complexities of Australia and exploring its multifaceted nature. The Australian Institute of Landscape Architects AILA provides accreditation of university degrees and non-statutory professional registration for landscape architects. Once recognised by AILA, landscape architects use the title Registered Landscape Architect across the six states and territories within Australia. AILA's system of professional recognition is a national system overseen by the AILA National Office in Canberra. To apply for AILA registration, an applicant usually needs to satisfy a number of prerequisites, including university qualification a minimum number of years of practice and a record of professional experience. Landscape architecture within Australia covers a broad spectrum of planning, design, management and research. From specialist design services for government and private sector developments through to specialist professional advice as an expert witness. As we venture forward, let's examine Canada in detail and gain a deeper appreciation for its significance. In Canada, landscape architecture, like law and medicine, is a self-regulating profession pursuant to provincial statute. For example, Ontario's profession is governed by the Ontario Association of Landscape Architects pursuant to the Ontario Association of Landscape Architects Act. Landscape architects in Ontario, British Columbia, and Alberta must complete the specified components of their landscape architecture registration examination as a prerequisite to full professional standing. Provincial regulatory bodies are members of a national organization, the Canadian Society of Landscape Architects and Association de Architectes Paysagistes du Canada CSLAAAPC, and individual membership in the CSLAAAPC is obtained through joining one of the provincial or territorial components. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting Indonesia to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. ISLA Indonesia Society of Landscape Architects is the Indonesian Society for Professional Landscape Architects formed on 4 February 1978 and is a member of IFLAAPR and IFLA World. The main aim is to increase the dignity of the professional members of landscape architects by increasing their activity role in community service, national and international development. The management of IALI consists of national administrators who are supported by 20 regional administrators provincial level and three branch managers at city level throughout Indonesia. Landscape architecture education in Indonesia was held in 18 universities, which graduated bachelor and magister graduates. The Landscape Architecture Education Incorporate in Association of Indonesian Landscape Architecture Education. In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting Italy and exploring its intricate connections to our topic. IIAPP Associazione Italiana Architettura del Paesaggio is the Italian Association of Professional Landscape Architects formed in 1950 and is a member of IFLA and IFLA Europe formerly known as EFLA. AIAPP is in the process of contesting this new law which has given the Architects Association the new title of Architects, Landscape Architects, Planners and Conservationists whether or not they have had any training or experience in any of these fields other than architecture. In Italy, there are several different professions involved in landscape architecture, architects, landscape designers, doctor landscape agronomists and doctor landscape foresters, often called landscape agronomists, agrarian experts and graduated agrarian experts. Let's transition to New Zealand and uncover its significance. 
The New Zealand Institute of Landscape Architects NZILA is the professional body for landscape architects in NZ. In April 2013, NZILA jointly with AILA hosted the 50th International Federation of Landscape Architects IFLA World Congress in Auckland, New Zealand. The World Congress is an international conference where landscape architects from all around the globe meet to share ideas around a particular topic. Within NZ, members of NZILA when they achieve their professional standing can use the title Registered Landscape Architect NZILA. NZILA provides an education policy and an accreditation process to review education program providers. Currently there are three accredited undergraduate landscape architecture programs in New Zealand. Lincoln University also has an accredited master's program in landscape architecture. Get ready for an exciting exploration as we unravel the mysteries of Norway. Landscape architecture in Norway was established in 1919 at the Norwegian University of Life Sciences and MBU at the Norwegian School of Landscape Architecture at the Faculty of Landscape and Society is responsible for Europe's oldest landscape architecture education on an academic level. The department's areas include design and design of cities and places, garden art history, landscape engineering, greenery, zone planning, site development, place making and placekeeping. Let's zoom in on South Africa and understand its implications. In May 1962, Joan Pym and Sutton, Peter Lucia and Rolf Botha considered the forefathers of the profession in South Africa established the Institute for Landscape Architects, now known as the Institute for Landscape Architecture in South Africa ILASA. ILASA is a voluntary organization registered with the South African Council for the Landscape Architectural Profession SACLAP. It consists of three regional bodies, namely, Gauteng, Kwazula Natal and the Western Cape. ILASA's mission is to advance the profession of landscape architecture and uphold high standards of professional service to its members and to represent the profession of landscape architecture in any matter which may affect the interests of the members of the institute. ILASA holds the country's membership with the International Federation of Landscape Architects IFLA. In South Africa, the profession is regulated by SACLAP, established as a statutory council in terms of Section 2 of the South African Council for the Landscape Architectural Profession Act Act 45 of 2000. The council evolved out of the Board of Control for Landscape Architects BOCLASA, which functioned under the Council of Architects in terms of the Architectural Act. Act 73 of 1970. SACLAP's mission is to establish, direct, sustain and ensure a high level of professional responsibilities and ethical conduct within the art and science of landscape architecture with honesty, dignity and integrity in the broad interest of public health, safety and welfare of the community. After completion of an accredited undergraduate and a postgraduate qualification in landscape architecture at either the University of Cape Town or the University of Pretoria, or landscape technology at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology, professional registration is attained via a mandatory mentored candidacy period minimum of two years and sitting of the professional registration exam. After successfully completing the exam, the individual is entitled to the status of professional landscape architect or professional landscape technologist. Get ready for an exciting part as we dive into Sweden. Architects Sweden, Sveriges Architekter, is the collective trade union and professional organization for all architects, including landscape architects, in Sweden. The professional body is a member of IFLA International Federation of Landscape Architects as well as IFLA Europe. As a landscape architect, anyone can become a member of Architects Sweden if they have a national or international university degree that is approved by the association. If the degree is from within the European Union, Architects Sweden approves landscape architect educations listed by IFLA Europe. 
for educations outside the EU. The association makes an assessment on a statement from the Swedish Council for Higher Education UHR. Let's now venture into the realm of United Kingdom and explore the fascinating intricacies it holds. The UX professional body is the Landscape Institute LI. It is a chartered body that accredits landscape professionals and university courses. At present there are 15 accredited programs in the UK. Membership of the LI is available to students, academics and professionals, and there are over 3,000 professionally qualified members. The Institute provides services to assist members including support and promotion of the work of landscape architects, information and guidance to the public and industry about the specific expertise offered by those in the profession, and training and educational advice to students and professionals looking to build upon their experience. In 2008, the LI launched a major recruitment drive entitled I Want to Be a Landscape Architect to encourage the study of landscape architecture. The campaign aimed to raise the profile of landscape architecture and highlight its valuable role in building sustainable communities and fighting climate change. As of July 2018, the I Want to Be a Landscape Architect initiative was replaced by a brand new careers campaign entitled Hikusa Landscape, which aims to raise awareness of landscape as a profession, improve and increase access to landscape education, and inspire young people to choose landscape as a career. This new campaign includes other landscape-related professions such as landscape management, landscape planning, landscape science and urban design. As we venture forward, let's take a closer look at United States and its impact on our understanding. In the United States, landscape architecture is regulated by individual state governments. For a landscape architect, obtaining licensure requires advanced education and work experience, plus passage of the national examination called the Landscape Architect Registration Examination LARE. Several states require passage of a state exam as well. In the United States licensing is overseen both at the state level and nationally by the Council of Landscape Architectural Registration Boards CLARB. Landscape architecture has been identified as an above average growth profession by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics and was listed in US News and World Report's list of best jobs to have in 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009 and 2010. The National Trade Association for United States Landscape Architects is the American Society of Landscape Architects. Frederick Law Olmsted who designed Central Park in New York City, is known as the father of American landscape architecture. In the next segment, we'll be exploring examples and its implications for our subject matter. File Moleris 24 sorted Potiga op Potiga in Dorden, France Fai Shige Monziki Sop Japan's Garden in Itsu, Japan Fai Chines Garden Classical Chinese Garden Fai Linkelsk Garden Octopiri in Helsingborg, Sweden Farkro Asian Sculpture Garden Occasion Sculpture Garden in Texas, United States Fai Monolithic Vision Sculpture Garden in Oslo, Norway Fai Le Gardeni Pensili Oak Roof Terrace Garden Ventimiglia, Italy Filal Esquiral Garden Sock Esquiral Formal Palace Garden in Madrid, Spain File Medieval Garden of St. Agnes Sock Mediterranean Garden in Alps Maritimes, France File Villa Lomagia Ocus of Steps at Villa Lomagia in Quarata, Italy Filori Garden in St. Glory Garden in Chicago, United States, GGN and Pete Odorf Fire Hide Line Park, the new second section Kyle Bine Second Section, a repurposed area in New York City. United States File Madrid P A R Q U E M A D R I D R I O S O L S T I C I O A O 2015 D I E W Panera Milk Paco Madrid Rio Formal Use of Water in Madrid, Spain Fire Shabapin Rotterdam Sfok Shabapin Urban Park in Rotterdam, Netherlands File Memorial Park Oak Memorial Park a Memorial Park in New York City, United States. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and share it with someone who might benefit from it.